Please go ahead and speak something to the Lord. Open your hearts and release whatever you have to the Lord. Our great God who is ready to answer our prayers and he understands the desire and the zeal of our hearts. Whatever puzzles you, it is the right opportunity for you to release them to the right person who can address those issues. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we praise your name for allowing us, Lord, to be in your presence this morning. We thank you for loving us the way we are, O oh Lord. You have preserved us from the calamities of life, and that is why we are here gathered in your presence. There are many people who could have made it, but they have failed because they are sick. Some have just died, but because of their presence. Love for us, we are here, Master. And therefore, Father, we dedicate ourselves to you as living sacrifice. And it's our prayer that even as we toil in your presence, Lord, your name shall be glorified in the name of Jesus. May you remember those among us, including those who are in hospitals, Lord, people who are sick, Master. May you stretch your hands that ills upon their life, Master, King of glory. We pray, Father, that you restore their health, Lord, that they may come out of such situations, Lord, and give glory back to you for what you have done in their life. In the name of Jesus, Father, remember those who have lost their loved ones, Lord. May you comfort them. May you minister to their soul. Give them the reason to keep on hoping in you, Master. In the name of Jesus, areas where the orphans who have remained behind, may you be their father. May you supply their needs, Master. In the name of Jesus, may you keep them under the shadow of your wings, Lord. And let your will be done in their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we pray for our families. We thank you that you started the first family in the Garden of Heaven. And you desire your people, Lord, to live together in harmony, Lord, in our families. We pray, Father, that your peace will prevail in our families. Where there is confusion, we pray, Father, that you restore order. We pray, Father, for families that are almost breaking up. That, God, you will intervene as the Lord of all God. And that you restore sanity in such families, Lord. In the name of Jesus, that the children would be raised up in the right environment that will make them of great value to the kingdom business and the nation. Thank you, Father, for the fire you have brought us, Lord. May you bless our country, Uganda. May you bless the leadership of this country. We pray, Father, that you will continue to watch over our President Museveni. And people will help him, Lord, to govern this country. May you surround him with wise counselors, Lord. People will offer the right advices, Lord, to him as he manages this country. And it's our prayer that you will grant him the humility that is needed, Master King of Glory, for him to discern and welcome such advices. In the name of Jesus, we pray for our preacher this day, our dear chaplain. That God, you will use her 
to speak to us as a special vessel in your own hand. May you use her, Lord, to impact our lives, Lord, using your word. We pray that your message will come out clearly and powerfully, Lord, unto us. And that we shall be caused to be aligned to your own will. And that we may live to serve your purpose in this life. We thank you, Lord. And we pray that you will guide us, Lord, in this service till the end. So that your will may be done. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's take our seat as we go for the ministry of the word. Thank you. Our reading is taken from the gospel according to Luke. It is the gospel according to St. Luke, chapter 11, chapter 11, from verse 1 to 4. Chapter 11, from verse 1 to 4. And it says, He was praying in a certain place, and when he ceased, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. As John taught his disciples, and he said to them, When you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation. That's the word of God. Praise the Lord, everyone. You are all very welcome for this nine o'clock service. Kindly may we stand up and affirm what we believe as Christians by saying the Apostles' Creed. Apostles' Creed, statement of our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to just the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's give God a mighty hand of praise. <laughs> praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Thank you so much. You may be seated. Once again, we'd like to welcome all of you. We are happy to see you. Thank you so much for coming. And we'd like to welcome the visitors who are here today. Do we have visitors? Kindly just put up your hands. And we see you, welcome you. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. We are blessed this morning. St. Franciscans who are here, let's put our hands together as we welcome all our visitors this morning. You are very, very welcome. Feel at St. Francis, amen. And when you are around, make this to be your church. And where you're seated, please make it to be your pew. Make that to be your seat, amen. Thank you so much for coming. We'd like to welcome our brothers and sisters who are joining us online. 
Thank you very much for joining us. May God minister to you wherever you are, and may you be blessed. Hallelujah. Uh, in a very special way, we'd like to welcome our dear chaplain, the Reverend Dr. Lydia Steinba, who is here. Thank you so much for praying for her. She has not been well, but we thank God so much for his healing hand upon her. Let's clap our hands to the Lord for the healing upon our dear chaplain. Uh, we'd like to appreciate the pioneer team for leading us in the physical overnight. We had great time on Friday. Thank you so, so much, our people's warden, Uncle Peter and your team. Thank you so, so much. Uh, morning devotions, we have them from Monday to Friday every day beginning from 7 to 8. So we welcome all of you to come and begin the day together in the presence of God. Uh, we are blessed to have clergy who are here. I would like to take this opportunity to welcome the ministers of God who are seated here. Kindly just stand up and wave to Christians. Kindly stand up. Yes. Wave to the Christians. You are very, very welcome. And thank you so much for coming. We also have the pastors who are here. Kindly just stand up, the Reverend Irene Akankwasa and Reverend Geoffrey Iluk, who is here. Thank you so much. Reverend Irene is a bride. Uh, they are celebrating their 28th wedding anniversary. So, Reverend Irene and her family will be giving thanks in the next service, 11 o'clock service. So plan and join them as we give thanks to the Lord. And uh, we, as we communicated earlier on, this month of July has been dedicated for prayers. Tell your neighbor, prayers. Prayers. Yes. We want to appreciate all of you. We had a wonderful time together on 7th, uh, on Thursday, and these prayers will begin at, uh, at 5.30 to 7. How many of us were here? Yes, thank you very, very much. Make sure you be, you'll bring a friend next, uh, next Thursday. Hallelujah. And next week, if you don't see us, we shall all be going for all clergy conference which has been organized by our Archbishop, we shall all be at Indeja University, beginning from Tuesday to Thursday. So pray for us, pray for St. Francis, that God will continue to lead his people. Amen. Mothers, uh, Christian Women Fellowship, Mary Magdalene's Day, celebrations will be on 6th of August this year. And they will be enrolling new members. So Christian Women Fellowship, anyone, uh, anyone from 18 qualifies to be enrolled. So if you're a young lady here, you are not yet enrolled, please. Take it seriously and get enrolled. Amen? Amen? Yes, it's good to identify. Amen? The Youth and Students Ministry... Uh, the senior six, the senior six vakis, they have their fellowships every Tuesdays and Thursdays, beginning from two to five. So we welcome you, the teens who are there. You teens, you have services that begins from eleven in the boardroom. For those who have been attending, I am very sure you know the place, and we welcome all of you to be part of that. In 11 o'clock service, we shall have Thanksgiving, as I, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, the Reverend Irene Akankwasa and the family and all those who have, uh, who, 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 who would like to give thanks to the Lord for special things that God has done for them, we also welcome them to join in the Thanksgiving. Amen? Even in this service, we shall have time of Thanksgiving. Praise the Lord. Uh, this morning, we are blessed to have a woman of God. 
Yes, a woman of God who is going to bring the word of God to us this morning. That's none other than the Reverend Dr. Lydia Taimba, Digital Mama. So let's welcome, the, uh, let's welcome her once again. Let's put our hands and make her to feel very, very welcome. She will be speaking to us on this topic, Becoming Prayerful. Teach us how to pray. Tell your neighbor, at least when you go out, don't forget that. Becoming Prayerful. Tell your neighbor, Becoming Prayerful. Teach us how to pray. May the Lord bless you. Thank you so much for coming before she comes. May I now invite the drama team to come. Thank you so much. God bless you. This is very, very, very simple. So, Musa, you are doing it. So, Musa, you are Musa. Musa will also give us tabs that don't. Doctor, it is going to be okay. It is going to be okay. Musa. So we are calling you. Okay. you. Your people don't mind other people's no, life. No, 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 no. You, you, you give us the cool down. Uh, you give him some distance. That is, is no. Can you see? Give him. So do something. Do something. No, no, no. You give him some distance. Give him some distance. I'm sorry. You who are you holding? Are you the Musa? But the man is going to die. What is no, the situation is not too bad. I so just putting these things like this. You, you let me also put under here. No, you... I gave you the, me the medicine. What's wrong? We you gave him. Has he finished the dose? Uh, he is swallowing in bits. In, in bits? bits, yes. Mm, he mm. swallowed. And then today in the morning, we gave him, early in the morning before he brushed, ah, da, medicine, medicine. And yesterday when we were coming from the village, we knew we were going to get disturbed here and there. Mm. So we decided to give him from morning, afternoon, what and in the evening at once. No, 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 no. We no. gave him the tabs. No. That is not the do. right way. That is no. not what I told but you. On, what did I tell you? On the package you said one times three, which is equal to yes, three it is, at once. It is one times three, not three times one. No, you didn't do math. Did you do mathematics? Let me tell you, I'm the doctor, right? I am, I am the son. Now what did you, I told you, you have to give him food first. Why did you give him the medicine? No, no you first? say food first. Now. Yes. No. Food first, not medicine first. But he, when you put you food first. You have to follow the right instruction. But Musa, let me educate you something small here. When you put food first, the food will be digested first and said we, we had to put no. medicine first and then food no, on no, top. No, 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 you have something. to follow the right way. I told you this medicine is very strong. You have to first give him some food. Now you see you're going to kill your dad. It is you killing. Why did you no, give us? No, it's you. He's killing Why him. Why did you give us strong medicine I if you didn't want you. our dad to die? No, I told you you have to follow the right way of taking that medicine. But Joe, it's then you who was taking care. Then you take all the medicine for medicine. the whole day in one minute? It is Joe who was taking no, care. No, you have to know the right way of taking this medicine. Now you want to kill him. He's going to die. No, he's not going to die. What you're going to do, what you're going to do, you're going to take him back, but make sure you follow that right way. Taking you first process. give him some food, then you give him the medicine, but don't give him the medicine of the whole day for one minute. Mm -hmm. It is so not the right way. The that is not the right. So Let me write for the you The major subject again. here is medicine. If, she, if he takes medicine, you regardless of... give him one tablet in the morning, one tablet in the afternoon, and in the evening. What are you doing? That's it. Let me write it for you here again. You one even... time or three. After eating. After eating. Yes. Joey, did you leave some potatoes in the evening? Yeah, yeah, Have. Potatoes. You... Make sure you follow that... So you have even not worked on Stop following your own ways. The same way, church. If he wants to get healed, he has to follow the right way of taking that medicine. And if we want to be prayerful, we need to know how to pray. Someone wants to be prayerful, we need to follow the right way. Hallelujah. 
Praise the Lord. God is good and all the time. Wow, let's give a big, big hand to the Lord. Hallelujah. How is your neighbor? Is your neighbor happy? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, and you really want to show, if you're happy and you know it, clap to Jesus. Hallelujah. It is a joy to be in the presence of the Lord. How have you been? Are you happy? Please, is your neighbor smiling? Just find out. Maybe they're a little bit groomy, many wrinkles on the face, or they didn't have dinner. Ask them if they had dinner. Good. Please, we have to be each other's keeper. Hallelujah. Yes, we are sisters and brothers in the Lord. Once again, we want to welcome all of you. Thank you so much for coming and for choosing to be in the presence of the Lord this morning. I always tell us that this is where Jesus resides. Hallelujah. And so when we come, we need to be expectant and allow him to speak to us. Praise the Lord. I'm excited this day because I have my family with me. My auntie decided to come with the entire family. I'm so happy. Please stand up. Yes, she's Mrs. Seremba, a nurse. Married to Dr. Seremba Apid. I know in our home we love to speak. And uh, we are preachers. She's a PK. Just come and say hello. Just come and say hello. Just say hello so they hear your voice, okay? Came with the, please, please, Rose, uh, Dr. Dennis, just stand up. Just stand up and wave to the people. I'm sure some of you know Dr. Dennis Reste. Dr. Dennis is, uh, he, he works here at the university. Just say hello. One minute. At our home, we speak a lot. We share that name, Sally, because the dad was called Sally. He was a reverend. And so my auntie will say just a word. Praise God. God is good. But it's nice to be here with you. Amen. But how good is it? Did I know that one day I'll come to St. Francis when my daughter is here? This is my brother's daughter. Yes. Yes. Um, it's nice to see you here. I'm the third born in the family of Ereveni. And, he, and her father is the sixth born. But it is a pleasure to see this girl. In fact, we used to see her. He's not a girl. You will excuse, <laughs> you will excuse us because we parents, we take children as a, yeah, as a young ones, as a girls, as boys, yeah, because we are parents. He's a girl, but just excuse me. This is, a, I don't know how much I can really, uh, I, I can stress this, because this is a pleasure. You can remember very long time ago when the world was just blind. Yeah? Later at our faith, the one who, the, our father, Nabe Romo, our reverend in Sale, reverend, and he, she is following him. Mm. We praise that old man. <laughs> I'm telling you, we praise that old man who is already gone, and he has given us a successor. Doctor, we really love you. Amen. It's a dream. We never know that our father will come in, in you, because I see our father in you. Ah, it's a pleasure. But I say, you pray for, pray for her. Pray for her. Our father was very, very, very great in this uh, preaching the gospel. The trinter, you know, one, day, one time I was, I was with my aunt. <laughs> one time I was my aunt. Yes. Uh, my singer, singer Owen Songa, the one who witnessed my marriage. Uh, that, that aunt of mine, my singer, told me, you, you, you know, you know, I'm sorry, Nakarita, you are unlucky. Because, in fact, it was a trinta Sunday. Yeah, a trinta. It was a trinta. We came out of the church, and when we were going out, I was telling us how our father used to preach the word of God on the trinta. Because he, that is a very, very difficult subject. But he used to preach so nice. Everybody would come out of the church when he's really laughing and understanding fully what you treat them. So I pray to God. So you take, please, you come later in his hands, Amen. in his feet, so that you do the work exactly as he did, and even pass him over. Please. 
Um, I am um, my husband is Dr. Seremba. I'm um, Mrs. Seremba. I'm now Lady Seremba because he was given a chitiwa of Pope, Pope, Pope Night. Kere Kerezia Catholic gave him a chitiwa of Pope Night. So the ladies for the, the Pope Nights are called Lady Seremba. I'm now Lady Seremba. This is our daughter. We really love her and we don't know how we feel because Amen. we are. Amen. <laughs> Please keep, keep our. I told you in our family we can speak to Praise the Lord. When I was still serving in the Pentecostal church, and my parents were not happy, and every time they would complain, they would say, no, you need to come back to the real church. And when I came back, the Lord spoke to me clearly to live where I was serving. I heard his voice clearly, and I left. Then I told them I'm going to do theology. Of course, they felt bad because I was working really hard. And when I came to do theology, at first I told my dad that I was going to be a minister, a reverend, and he was worried. Are you sure? Hope your husband will not run away from you. And I was like, but your father raised you as a reverend. And so he said, okay, we bless you. And then when I was ordained on that day of celebration, my father cried and cried because he was like, I can't imagine now my father has come back to life through my daughter. So to God be the praise. Most of my friends knew me as Kalunji. That's the name I used to use. My dad's called Kalunji. I used to use Kalunji mainly. But uh, when I became a minister, the Lord convicted me to also add my grandfather's name, Nsali, to honor him. Because I believe the men and women that served in those days before us, it was very tough. So we want in a special to recognize all the ministers of God, the pastors, the bishops, the lay readers, all those who have gone to be with the Lord for the ministry that they have done. Let's clap to the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My prayer is that uh, I want to see many ladies and gentlemen also wake up and say we want to be reverends because it's cool to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. When the Lord was calling me back, I really struggled. That will be a story for another time. I struggled and some of my many struggles included, I was telling God, I am a designer. Designers don't be reverends. <laughs> and God was saying, I want you as you are. And let me tell you, because I love the Lord, I submitted to God, and I am the happiest woman because I said yes to the Lord and serving him. It gives me great joy when I see I have mentored very many people in ministry, and it gives me great joy when I see men and women come to serve the Lord because we are created to worship and serve the Lord. So friends, St. Franciscans, together let us serve this God that has loved us. Praise the Lord. Our dear friends online, we love you. Please, where you are, serve the Lord and continue to remain in Jesus. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity you've given to us to be before you at a time as this. We are so humbled that you've honored us with your presence. You have established your throne in our midst. Thank you so much. Please take over. I pray that you touch your sons and daughters. I pray that you reach out to each and every one of us that have gathered this day. I pray, Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, that you consume us and give us a hunger and a thirst for you. As who are gathered and all our sisters and brothers online, give us a zeal and a passion for you that we may want nothing else but only you. As we dive deep into your word, may our eyes be open and may our hearts be be drawn to you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. The topic of our discussion this morning is becoming prayerful. Teach us how to pray. Is there someone here who wants to become prayerful? 
by show of hand. Oh, mine is half. I want to pray. I want to learn each day how to talk to God. Friends, the greatest gift you can give to your children is teaching them. Yes, all the others are important, taking them to school, very important. But the greatest of them all will be teaching your children to speak to God and listening to the voice of God. So the only way you can do that is only when you learn to speak to God and listen to the voice of God. Because God is real and he is present. Praise the Lord. I want you to please turn to your neighbor. Just have a flashback. Recollect your memory and just tell your neighbor your first experience when you prayed alone, if, you're to, if you remember. That time when you prayed alone. How was it? What was that experience? Share with your neighbor. Mm-hmm. Okay, now we're scratching their heads. Hey, hey, how was it? Oh, you don't know. Don't worry. You're in the right place. <laughs> Turn to your neighbor. Don't fear your neighbors. We are sisters and brothers. Share. Praise the Lord. I remember, yes, hallelujah. Good, good. I see conversations are still going on. Praise the Lord. And I'm seeing those who didn't turn to their neighbors. They are guilty, meaning they don't pray. <laughs> don't worry, you're in the right place. And Jesus is here to instruct and to teach all of us. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much for sharing. Let's clap to the Lord for that. I remember as a young girl, many times her mother would come. We used to call her Mchala Mwaule. She would come home. I'm talking about your mother. Her mother would come. She used to come home sometimes at my father's home and would see it. Before going to bed, she would start singing in her failing deep voice because she was old. She will start singing. All my brothers and sisters would go to their beds. Me, I would run and sit next to her. And then very early in the morning before we jump out of bed, again we would hear her sing. And I would jump out of my bed, go sit right next to her and would pray. No wonder I became a reverend. Hallelujah. I learned from her. She modeled prayer before me. I don't know who is modeling prayer before you. My prayer is that you'll, God will position the right models. And when I was in school, I can't say at that time when I came out of bed and uh, was with her, I confessed to Jesus. I, do, I can't say that. But when I was in school, young as I, I was, I think it was in the 90s, around primary three, two, primary three, I think, four. Um, I was in school, in a boarding school. And I, I, every lunch hour and evening would hear Christians, it was a Christian school, would hear Christians meeting and singing. So one day, I just walked into the fellowship and I told them, I want to pray. And I told them, I want to be saved. And that's how I got saved. And hooray, I am still walking with Jesus. Hallelujah. The next time again I had them pray, I walked into that fellowship. And praying, I just came and said, I want to pray. They received me, I prayed and prayed, and that day I was baptized with the Holy Spirit and I started speaking in tongues without anyone laying hands on me. Hallelujah. A hand clap to the Lord. It is important to note those experiences because our God never wastes an experience. And may God give you an experience in Jesus' name. Brothers and sisters, very many times... Often we pray and come to the Lord with a shopping list, true or false. Many of us come with a list and we say, God, I want you to do this, do this. If you don't do it, I will not testify. Mm? And sometimes we, we throw tantrums. We read the list and after that we say, Amen, bye-bye. Have you ever done that? Come before the Lord with your long list. Many of us are culprits, even as we keep quiet. Many of us have done that. We come and just recite, recite, recite what we want and say, thank you, bye-bye, we meet in the evening. Brothers and sisters, allow me to show you that slide. What prayer is not. What prayer is not. Hope my friends have my slides. I love to communicate and I love to use everything in communication to bring the message using different mouth media. What prayer is not. Prayer is not changing God to do what he wants. Hallelujah. 
Not because you want something and say, I'm going to pray and fast, and it falls in place. Woo-hoo, it might not happen. Prayer instead changes me and you. Prayer is not, I'm trusting God. Trusting his hand to do whatever you want. That's not prayer. Another one, prayer is not getting what you want. That is good, but that's not all about prayer. God in his mercy, he gives us all those things, but prayer is not about getting what we want. Prayer is actually about getting more of God. So God has given us this ministry of prayer so that you and me will draw close to God and be more like God. To die to selfishness, to die to greed, and be more like God. So what is prayer? Friends, the greatest tragedy in life, the greatest tragedy in life is not about unanswered prayers. It is about unoffered prayers. And if you are a person that prays when trouble hits, there is a problem. You are actually in trouble. If you're the person that is just reaction or you just respond when problems come and then you say, I will pray, then you are in trouble. God calls upon us to pray at all times. I have resolved to seek the face of the Lord until I die. I have resolved to know nothing else but God. Praise the Lord. May you as well join in and make that resolution. It's in Isaiah 62 where Isaiah learned of God's prophecy concerning Israel. And then Isaiah says, for Jerusalem is sick, I shall not remain silent. The Lord has brought you to stir you up. To agitate you a little bit so that you wake up and say, for my family's sake, I will not remain silent. For my business's sake, for St. Francis' sake, for everything, I will not remain silent. What is prayer, friends? Prayer, just put for me that slide. Prayer, yes, as I've said, it is not just getting what we want. It is a heartfelt conversation. Hallelujah. Prayer is a heartfelt conversation. It is like a son talking to the father. Fathers in this place, do you sometimes talk to your children? You take your boy child out for a walk or take them out and have a quiet time together? Do you spend time with them? If you don't spend time with them, TV will spend time with them. Hallelujah. If you don't spend time with them, other men out there who are not discipled will spend time with your children. But learning from our father, prayer is a conversation. You know, it's Mother Teresa who said, I'll read this quote from Mother Teresa. She said, prayer is not asking. Prayer is putting oneself in the hands of God. At his disposition and listening to his voice in the depth of our hearts. It is not about just asking, but putting ourselves in his hands, availing ourselves to him and allowing him to do what he wants to do in us. Hallelujah. Now help me turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, did you have a conversation with Jesus this morning? Did you have a conversation or you were rushing and saying, we go, we are going to talk about prayer. <laughs> ay, ay, yeah, let's be honest. <laughs> Or some of us in the morning, or especially on Sunday, we don't do our devotions. Ah, after all, I'm going to church. Hey, hey. God is calling upon us to pray without ceasing. I believe that prayer is a key that opens every day. Hallelujah. Just help me shake your neighbor's shoulder a little bit and say, learn to use the key called prayer. 
to unlock blessings for each day. Please preach. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, prayer is a key. I was saddened when I read something in the newspapers on Friday. Daily Monitor. I want to think some of you read that. You know, when we give up on prayer, we are reminded Jesus Christ went into Jerusalem and he found money changers, people selling things in the temple. What did he do? He received, was, he received that holy anger and he cast them out of the temple. And in response, he said, my one, two, three. Now I'm seeing those who don't read by their Bibles. Hallelujah. One, two, three. My father's house shall be a house of prayer. Praise the Lord. My prayer is that St. Francis Chapel will be a house of prayer. My prayer is that you and me will be women and men of prayer. God is waiting for you and me to pray. I was burdened when I read this in the Daily Monitor. A Muslim married man, is there someone who read that before even I go on? A Muslim married man with a Catholic married woman were found in the Anglican church at the altar having sex. Oh God, indeed, fire in Jesus' name. What is happening to the body of Christ? When we abandon prayer, when we abandon the place of prayer in the church and in our lives, we turn God's house, we turn our hearts into a den of robbers. And so God is challenging you and me to do something. When I read that, I wept. I was like, God, this is wrong. But it's a sign that we have abandoned the place of prayer. May that not come near us in Jesus' name. May, I, may we go back to the basics. Woe unto us when we choose not to seek the face of the Lord. Woe unto us. So God is, that's why this topic is relevant and important today. Because prayer, brothers and sisters, it is so simple, by the way. Every child can pray. But at the same time, prayer is so hard or great that we cannot say that we have mastered how to pray. We cannot say we know it all. Sometimes we might organize sessions or times to pray and people will come and say, hey, but you, it's too much. Hey, you're making our church into this and that. We've had all that in many different churches where we've served, especially people that don't love to pray. They'll give all the excuses. They'll say, you're turning our church into Pentecostal, into what? We are facing some challenges in some churches. But I thank God that St. Francis is different. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. This is the house of God. And you know what God is saying? For you and me to become prayerful, it is simple. Very simple. In Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3, we are going to read it together. I underlined a few phrases and words. Yes, I love to engage. Let's read together. Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3, what does it say? Hallelujah. Call to me and what will happen? You know that song we used to sing in Sunday school? Telephone to Jesus. Telephone to Jesus. Every day. Hello. Telephone to Jesus. Telephone to Jesus. Telephone to Jesus. Great. Now, a question to all of us. How many calls do we make a day to our friends? Mm-hmm. Or oh, how many hours do we spend on our phone calling people? Yeah, very many. We keep putting air time, data, data. And when you go to a place and there is no data, 
no Wi-Fi. The first, all of us, the first thing we ask when you go to places, say a hotel, do you have Wi-Fi? Mm-hmm. Because you want to keep the what? The conversation going, the connection. Now help me ask your neighbor, how many times have you called upon God this week? How many times? Look, I've, I've grown it a little bit big, so you might have something to tell your neighbor. Okay? How many times have you called upon God? Friends, when we do not call upon God, we cheat ourselves. We cheat ourselves. We deny ourselves an opportunity to tap into the secrets of heaven. Because the Bible said, when you call, I will do what? And I will do uh, what else? Tell you. Great. Some of us are struggling in our businesses. Some of us, our marriages are at the verge of breaking. Some of us, you have tried this, it's failing. You're, hey, you're hoping from this and this. But the question is, have you heard from the Lord? Do you know the mind of God concerning that project? Does he actually want you to do it? I shared my story in the first service. Quickly, I'll share it. And before I was in church serving God, and you know, sometimes when you're holding the microphone, many people will see you. And so I was still a single girl and beautiful. Hallelujah. I used to be beautiful. I don't know what happened, Miriam. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> sometimes when the babies come, you know, things change. But anyway, this is it. I was still single, vibrant for the Lord, zealous for the Lord. And of course, I was spotted. Spotted. One person spotted me. He was active in ministry. And they said, you know, I think you're the one. I want to marry you so we can serve together. And this person was on my team. And uh, I think, you know, he thought that, you know, because we work together, then I will also say yes. Anyway, another one also came. He had got an opportunity to go to Switzerland. Mm -hmm. Miriam, Mariam, you're saying, mm -hmm. And then he said, Lady, I think you're the one. I want to take you to Switzerland. So we start a ministry there. Second, the third one was in the USA. Hallelujah. Mm, and you know, people have to get green. He had a green card. And he wanted to get a green card for me. Said, Lydia, you're the one. Now this third one was a married man. Oh, hope all the married men are listening. Hallelujah. <laughs> And so he said, you know, my marriage is not working. I think you're the one. Please, you're going to come. I will. Da, 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 da. Everything. Like these people are joking. They didn't know that I was a woman, a God. Hallelujah. So I took some time in prayer. I sold to the Lord. Please, tell, help me turn, turn to your neighbor and ask your neighbor, if it were you, who would you choose? <laughs> if it were you. <laughs> Especially the single ladies, hallelujah. The single ladies. So I took time in prayer. And let me tell you, of the three, I took none. Mm -hmm. I took none. I said, no, for me, I'm committed to serving God. And let me tell you, two years down the road, the coolest dude appeared. <laughs> now, just imagine I'd made that decision. Oh, what, what would have become of him, Bambi? Oh, me. You know, so, it, what am I saying here? In everything, it's important to consult God. Call upon me, and I will show you great and unsearchable things. And that's why it's important for us to learn how to pray. Our Lord Jesus Christ, you please project for us the scripture you Project from the Bible. You might not do the slide. Mine were a little bit small. Luke 11. We shall just do the first four verses. That was our reading. Our Lord Jesus Christ was a prayerful man. Prayerful. Imagine God. The Bible tells us fully God and fully. And he prayed. You're like, really? Did you have to pray? So the thing is that if God on earth could pray, what about your neighbor? Just ask your neighbor, what about you? If Jesus could pray, <laughs> why have you put your confidence really? So let's read together. One, two, three.
forgive us the word of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, as we talk about becoming prayerful, the author of the Christian faith was a prayerful man. Jesus Christ, both God and man, he prayed. And we are told that on one occasion, meaning the disciples watched him pray severally, they watched him pray many times. So on one occasion, they came to him. So the question to the fathers, do your children know you as a praying father? Mothers, do your children know you as a praying mother? I remember I was still serving at St. Luke's in Tinder, and I think I was going through a long time of fasting and Every time I came back home, the first thing I did was to kneel and thank God for the day. So that day, I think I was tired, and I'd come back late. I was fasting. So instead of, I put my bag on the table and just rushed to the kitchen to get a drink. So my now 11-year-old, she was, I think, five. She tapped me and said, Mommy, you have not done one thing. I was like, what? You have not prayed. Ouch. Because she always saw me pray. And so that time when I rushed to pick a drink without praying, she called me to order. May our children call us to order in Jesus' name. May our children rebuke us in the name of Jesus. So we pray. Jesus did. Jesus prayed. What does it mean to become prayerful? To become prayerful, it means having a life punctuated with prayer. Being prayerful is having a life mixed up with prayer. First Thessalonians 5.17, we are instructed to do what? To pray without ceasing. To live a life of, with spirit-filled prayers. And when we do that, we will tap into the secrets of heaven. I will stand here to say, most of the things that happen in my life, the Lord reveals them to me. And I see them before they happen. And I see them. Because I've cultivated a lifestyle of prayer. And I will not give up. Hallelujah. I will pray until God calls me home. I hear the voice of God. And I know his voice. The Bible tells us that my sheep know my voice. May you grow to tap into the conversations of heaven. Sometimes our prayers are not answered. Why? Because we pray amiss. Why do we pray amiss? Because we don't understand the mind of God or the will of God. In Luke 6, from verse 9, when Jesus again taught his disciples, he said, he taught us the Lord's Prayer. Shall we say the Lord's Prayer together? I'll stop you somewhere. One, two, three. Allow it be. Our friends online, join in. That is, give us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Jesus, when he taught the Lord's Prayer, he made it very clear. Three things were central. He said, when you pray, because he did that, he demonstrated that. He said, say, our Father, your kingdom, your will. So sometimes we pray amiss because we haven't known the will of God concerning a situation. So for any situation in your life, such scripture. To hear the mind of God. And you'll be amazed. Hallelujah. Jesus modeled prayer. And we can learn from him. What does that mean? It means he demonstrated a life that was dependent on God. When we pray, we are demonstrating to everyone that we can't do life without God. On the other hand, when we do not pray, we are actually telling God, Oh, don't bother us. We can handle 
we can do it. Jesus demonstrated that he had a relationship, a connection with God. So that's why he did. So for you and me, we need to cultivate that. So taking us to what Jesus said, because they came to him and said, teach us how to pray. Teach us how to pray. And when he responded to them, he said, you pray and say, our father. Brothers and sisters, I do not know what your earthly fathers did to you. But I'm here to let you know that we have our heavenly father who loves us unconditionally. Your father in heaven thinks about you, loves you, and he has wonderful plans for us. Hallelujah. He knows your name. He is the good, good father. You are a good, good father. It's who you are. Just declare that. Declare that even as we continue to study. Mm. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. You are perfect in all. You are. He is so perfect. He is so good to you. And this good father loves you. Maybe you came this day and you've been so burdened. Your earthly father has abandoned you. This good father's arms are wide open. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Hallelujah. A big hand clap to God the Father. Oh, how he loves you. How God loves you. Even the sin you committed yesterday, by the way, the Lord knows it, but he still loves you. Hallelujah. Just tell your neighbor, don't run away from the Lord. He still loves you even with your many sins. Hallelujah. Nothing can separate you from his love. So he is a good father. Even when our fathers forsake us, these days there are very many, you know, DNA tests that are going around. Not so making news. Maybe you're there and you're saying, hi, is my father my real father? Really? No wonder that guy behaves like that. Anyway. Or maybe your father is also contemplating to go do a DNA. It doesn't matter the DNA results that come. I'm here to tell you, you have a father who loves you and thinks about you. He cares for you, praise the Lord. Yesterday, as I read the UK Times, listen to what the Archbishop of York, the most reverend, I know some of you might have read it later, get to, got to the different platforms, the most reverend Stephen Cottrell said that referring to God as father is problematic for people who have labored in an oppressive patriarchal grip. He's saying a whole archbishop that referring to God as father mm -mm, is a problem. My goodness. Sometimes when I think about the Church of England, I'm like, I think the devil is walking on two legs in that church. And for that reason, we need to pray for the remnant. The gospel came to Uganda through the Church Missionary Society in response to the letter the king, Mutesa II, wrote. And they came. The Church of England sent missionaries. Now they have abandoned the way. Someone needs to speak to the Archbishop of York and tell him that when Jesus was telling his disciples and telling us to refer to God as Father, he was not crazy. God is our Father. I know there is an agenda that we should now start referring to God as Mother. That is rubbish from the pits of hell. We shall take what Jesus has taught us. And he is the Father. 
He is the Father. And we shall approach him as a father. Hallelujah. He is the Father that loves us unconditionally. No matter whatever they throw at us, God loves us. So, we who love this God, how then can we pray? There are different dimensions of prayer that the Lord uh, wrote to me even as I prayed and reflected and wrote the teaching, different dimensions. Number one, when we pray, Jesus told clearly, but there is the prayer of adoration. Spending time adoring this God. When you say a prayer of adoration, that's why Jesus said, when you pray, say, hallowed be your name. There is no one like our God, the Father. Hallelujah. All the other gods, they are the works of man. And we have the most high God. He is completely unique. He is great. And he loves us. So when we engage in prayers of adoration, you know, that can even take you the whole day. Just telling him, come on, just take a minute and adore him. In your words, in your own language, speak to him. Just adore him. Tell him how good he is. Just admire him. You are awesome. You are beautiful beyond description. You are excellent. You are our God. And we are not ashamed to adore you. You are the King of kings and Lord of lords. The beginning and the end. We exalt you and we raise a banner to let everyone know that you are our friend. Hallelujah. And you are our God. Come on, let's clap to God. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. So a lifestyle of prayer demonstrates a lifestyle of worship. A lifestyle of surrender. A lifestyle of oh, living in awe of our God. Adoring him. Living in perpetual adoration. Hallelujah. For he is great. But I also want to make it clear to us as Christians, as we labor to learn how to pray, Christians pray to God the Father. And that's why Jesus said, say, our Father. And we don't pray to Jesus, hallelujah. Mm-hmm. I know many of you may be saying, are you sure, Reverend? Jesus also in John 16 said, pray to the Father in my... So we pray in the name of Jesus. The name that is above every name. And by the help of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. A hand clap to the Lord. Yes, a hand clap to the Lord. We have a helper. And let me tell you, when you don't know the Lord... You don't have a relationship with him. You don't have the Holy Spirit. It is that sad. But I can't sugarcoat it. When you don't know God, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is given upon receipt of Jesus Christ. When we open our hearts to the Lord, he fills us. And let me tell you, life is extremely hard, complicated, without the Holy Spirit. Remember, he is... The helper. In your endeavors, in your life pursuits, at your workplace, your career, you need the Holy Spirit. So, prayers of adoration. Then we also have prayers of petition. Coming to God to make your request. And that's why in our Lord's Prayer we say, give us this day our who of you fathers can give a stone to your daughter when she asks for bread? Any hand? Or who of you mothers? None of us, evil as we are, we can't do that. We love our children. So God is calling upon us to make our requests known. To petition him. To cry before him. God is able. Hallelujah. God is able. Nothing is impossible with God. I have so many testimonies. I have seen the Lord. I remember in 2017, I had taken the young people for camp. 
And you know, when I took the anchor for camp, I was, you know, every time I would, I've been doing camps for so long since I finished university and taking young people for camp. And so in 2017 was a harsh and tough one. When I took them for camp, I was okay, I was normal. And we spent a night and the following day, because when you go for camp, we start with prayers in the morning. So the following day, I don't know what happened, I was in the bathroom, all of a sudden, a sharp pain came into my back. I fell onto the floor came into my bag. I fell onto the floor. I could not move. I could not do anything. Thank God I was alone in the room. Because now if I was sleeping with someone, because I couldn't even dress myself. So anyway, I crawled in pain, in pain towards my bed. And I prayed. I called my friends, the intercessors. We pray with I say, I have an attack. Pray for me. And then there, I also got the Holy Communion elements because I had them. I blessed them, and then I took Holy Communion. And hooray, the energy came. I dressed up, and I was able to start off camp. Hallelujah. Mm. I walked to where the young people were. But then after starting off camp, the pain came back. I struggled. Thankfully, John was coming to also be one of the speakers at the camp. But I didn't tell him what I was going through. I didn't because I didn't want to scare him. So I struggled through, you know, from there I walked. And I didn't want the young people to know that I wasn't well. Because I mean, you're the leader and you want everything to go on well. So I struggled in pain and went back to the room. Thankfully, John arrived. I called, I sent someone, I said, please let him come right now. The pain was bad. I'm wearing ginger, it was bad. And friends, I collapsed. I was taken to Ginger Hospital. I don't know. They told me my pressure was too, too low. I was just giving away. I was just going. So they put me. They did all that they did. But as I was going before, you know, collapsing and everything, I told John he wanted to take me to hospital. I told him, don't take me to hospital. Stay and preach because I want everything to go on well. He, of course, he struggled, but he later stayed. After that, he came, he found me in Ginger Hospital. They had not really attended to me so much because they didn't know what the problem was, although they tried to manage the pain and bring me back a little bit. So he came and said, I want to take my wife to Kampala. So how he got an ambulance, it was also another issue. He struggled, they told me, I didn't know. He struggled, and thankfully, by God's grace, I was driven from Ginger to Novik. And upon taking me to Novik, I had bled and lost around 3.5 liter, 3 liters of blood. I got a problem in my womb. I nearly died. How many liters is a person supposed to have, the doctors? Six? Five? Five. Now I'd lost 3.5 liters of blood. You see me? I am a testimony. Hallelujah. <laughs> and when I came back, when I came back, some of my friends visited me. And I was praising God. So one of them looked at me and said, Lydia, how can you praise God after going through that while you are in the field working for him? And I told, him, I told my friend, you don't know this God. He is the one that has saved my life. So friends, when you petition God, he comes through for you. No situation is hard for God. God delivers his children. So I don't know the condition you came with. We are going to petition God. Hallelujah. We are going to cry out to God. Let's run quickly. Our time is moving very fast. Uh, there are also, there's also, but as when we pray, petitioning, it is important to know the will of God so that you pray according to the will of God, the mind of God. What is the mind of God concerning your health? The Bible says that by his stripes you are healed. And he sent his word to do what? So you take that word back to him and say, God, you said. God, you said. And let me tell you, God responds to his word. Praise the Lord. Yes, another dimension is prayers of confession and repentance. The time when we come to pray, that it, we need to create also a time of brokenness, repenting and crying to God. When David was confronted with his sin, when Nathan came to him, David broke down. He was so honest. And he said, against you, you alone have I sinned. We all fall short of God's glory. And God wants us to be honest. He is ready to 
forgive. That's why in our Lord's Prayer we say, forgive us our sins as we that is part of prayer. You can even spend a whole Your superficial prayers, you can't meet God. It has to be a heartfelt brokenness. Because a broken and a contrite heart, according to Psalm 51, 17, he will not despise. Break over that sin. Don't dilida around that sin. Don't hold that sin so dear and say, you know, this is my sin. For us in our family, we struggle with adultery. Hey! We rebuke adultery in the name of Jesus Christ. Some of us, we say, oh, for us in our family, we, have, we are short-tempered. When one wire goes off, hey, we don't joke. We rebuke that short-temperedness in Jesus' name. We are children of God. Praise the Lord. But then there's also another dimension. Prayers of deliverance and spiritual warfare. And, and that's, that's why in the, the Lord's, Lord's prayer, prayer again, again, the portion we read, and also in Matthew 6, he says, do not lead us into... But deliver us from evil. For us, the Anglicans, sometimes we tend to think this evil world doesn't exist. Friends, the enemy is real. And he's after your destiny. He's ready to destroy you. He comes to steal, kill. He will see to it that you don't attain that destiny. So he will throw every attack at you. But let me tell you, in Christ Jesus, we are more than conquerors. And we are not ignorant of the enemy's schemes. We need to know the word of God and look him into the face and say, devil, get behind me. Hallelujah. I don't know, ask your neighbor, are you among the people the devil fears? Hmm? Maybe the devil is saying, ah, this is my friend. He tells a lie here. He's not faithful here. He's corrupt. The devil knows his people, by the way. So ask your neighbor, does the devil know you really? We want the devil to know us in the way that, like he told the seven sons of Sekafa, Jesus I know, but, and Paul I know about, but what about you? Let the devil say, ha, ah, when Lydia wakes up, I, I, I am done. Hey. Be that woman that when you stand out, be that man that when you stand out, you scare the devil and he bows down because he's under our feet. That's where he belongs. Not in your home. And so you can't allow your marriage to break when you're just silent. You can't allow your community to be the way it is, or your family, or your extended family, when you're silent. Sometimes in our families there are quarrels, divisions, fighting for this and that. We as Christians, we need to stand in the gap and rebuke the devil. By the way, there are territorial spirits. Today I didn't come to teach about that. But there are territorial spirits that operate in communities, in areas, but we need to rebuke them. Remember when the gift of Daniel was being sent, we are told that the prince of what? Opaja resisted the angel. They are spirits, but let me tell you, when you pray, prayer breaks through that dark covering and he brings, it brings your gifts and blessings in Jesus' name. So don't sit back and say, ah, mommy prayed for me, daddy, eh, you need to pray. You need to get serious, hallelujah. And that also takes us to another dimension of intercessions. Interstanding in the gap. Praying for those in authority. Crying on behalf of our leaders. Please ask your neighbor, when was the last time you prayed for our president? You're there grumbling and saying, what, what, when was the last time? He is our president and he is the leader for the season, Hallelujah. And it's our mandate to pray for him. Okay, when was the last time you prayed for your pastors? Or you want your pastors to pray for you? So here in 1 Timothy 2, Paul calls upon Timothy and the church to offer petitions, intercession, thanksgiving, to be made for all people to pray. And another dimension of prayer is prayer of thanksgiving. We see that in Ephesians chapter 1, 15 to 23. Sometimes time moves so fast and you feel like, please stay, don't run, but yet it, it moves, hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, just put for me that slide, the next slide. Someone can take a screenshot of that. 
becoming prayerful, how do we start even knowing that, okay? One, two, three, approach God in prayer. Anytime, hallelujah, approach prayer using different forms of prayer. You cry, also crying is okay, hallelujah. Silence is also another form of prayer. Sometimes you're, it's too much. You can't even utter words and you're just groaning. You're just silent. You're just in tears and you have even no words to utter. Sometimes even a song. So make your prayer life interesting. Hallelujah. Enjoy. Sometimes and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. The Holy, when you pray, let the Bible be open. Let the Holy Spirit take over. Because we don't know how to pray. But the Spirit of God. You might be praying. And have you ever prayed and then God brings someone's name to you? Have you ever been in prayer and someone's name comes to you? God is asking you to pray for that person. Sometimes you're like, ah, I hate that person. And why is the name coming? You know God, you know I want you to deal. No, God is saying pray and love them. Hallelujah. Sometimes God allows dreams to go through our mind, calling upon us to intercede. Brothers and sisters, we are called to prayer. I might not go through all that, but to approach God in prayer. And finally, as I conclude, dear friends, allow me to be so honest and real with you. If you do not have a relationship with God, you can't pray prayers that are effective. It starts with a relationship. It starts with a relationship. We all have friends, not so. What do we do to know these friends? What do we do? We call them, we talk to them, send them messages, not so. Do you send messages to strangers? Do you talk to strangers? You find it hard. So it's the same thing. Even you can't speak to God if you don't know him. And if you don't know, the Bible is filled up with principles, with promises and, prophet and, and prophecies. You cannot take the principles back to God or you cannot take the promises back to God unless you know them. So you need to know God. You need to have a relationship with him so that you can be able to pray effective prayers. And finally, that's what I wanted to show you. Yes, prayer is not one way. Tell your neighbor, it is not one way. You yapping and yapping and, and talking, talking and, and running, running away. away. Many of us come and talk and we sweat. And then say, bye Jesus, bye God, I'll meet in the evening. I'm coming back. No. It is a what? A two-way. Two-way. It is a relationship. It is a conversation. Dear friends, the only way we are going to be prayerful and very effective and offer effective prayers we need to cultivate a relationship speak to him honestly openly in that two-way conversation may the lord bless you <clears throat> shall we bow our heads and pray father thank you for loving us come on speak to your father he is your father. Just sing that song softly. Don't pass me not to a gentle savior. Hear my humble cry. Just speak to your father. You know where you're struggling in your prayer life. Your challenges, you know them. Just speak to God. He is your father. Father, thank you. Yes, Lord. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
with every heart, every eye closed and heart yielded to the Lord, you're here and you want to start a relationship with God the Father so that you can talk to him freely. It starts with a relationship. Becoming prayerful starts with a relationship. You want to cultivate that relationship, just put up your hand and we can pray with you. Just put it up straight to God. Thank you. Thank you, my brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're putting that hand not to me, but to God. And you're saying, here I am. I want to start a relationship with you. Thank you. The Lord has brought you so he can do a new thing. Let's take it further. Just stand up where you are. Stand up. Boldly stand up. Stand up. Thank you. Thank you. You whose hand is up. Stand up. Stand up. You're speaking and saying, God, it's me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I wish the ushers would run close, but they are not there to run to you. But just walk to the front. Just walk to Jesus. Walk to the front. It is you and God. It's not about your friend. The rest of us, let's keep praying. Let's keep praying as we sing softly that song. Call to the Father. Call to the Father. The rest of us, let's keep praying. No spectating. We are just giving our hearts to the Lord. Yes, just run to the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just go ahead and speak to God. Intercessors, where you're at, pray, 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 pray. This is the most important decision in life. Starting a relationship with God. Is, that's what matters most. Come on, come on, pray. Pray, pray where you're at. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you for this day, my Lord. Thank you, oh God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just speak to him. You have come to him, say, come take over in my life. Yes, yes, yes. Surrender. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Yes, thank you, Lord. Now just open up your heart to the Lord. Just pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, I give you my heart. I give you my heart. I give you my soul. Take over in my life. I accept Jesus as my Lord and my Savior. I desire to start a relationship with you, my God. That I may talk to you freely, anytime, anywhere. I give myself away. Fill me, Lord. I receive you this day. In Jesus' name. Let us pray for our friends. Let us pray. Father, thank you so much for today. Thank you for drawing us to yourself, Abba Father, and for reminding us the value and importance of prayer. Becoming prayerful, learning from Jesus Christ. You have reminded us that you love us unconditionally. Lord, I dedicate your daughters, your sons that have come this day, my Lord. Father, I give them to you. Fill them again with your Holy Spirit, O oh God. Anoint them. Do not take your Holy Spirit from them. David cried and said, do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Father, your children have come this day that you may fill them, that you may anoint them, that you may empower them, that you may set them apart. We soak them in the blood of Jesus. We rebuke the enemy of their lives. Yes, we build a hedge of fire around them. We declare and decree that you will be victorious. We declare and decree that you will not die before your time. We declare and decree that you will live to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. In the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As they guide our friends, just guide them. You can just follow briefly and then you come back to your seat. Let's continue in prayer. Father God, let's continue, let's continue, let's continue. It's you and God. Yes, even as you pick something, the ushers will also be giving you. Feel free. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for speaking to us the importance of prayer and your desire that we become prayerful. We give ourselves away. Take us deeper in prayer, learning from Jesus Christ that we shall create quiet time. We shall withdraw from the crowds and seek you. That Lord, you alone, you'll help us in our weaknesses. Help us in our struggles so that we become men and women of prayer. Lord, may you anoint us and set us apart in Jesus' name. Amen. A big hand clap to the Lord.
Let's appreciate our dear chaplain, the Reverend Doctor, for the wonderful message. Thank you very, very much. Now we are joyfully going to bring our gifts to the Lord. And remember, God loves a cheerful giver. May God bless you even as you offer to him.
Thank you very much, the youth band. I would like to take this opportunity now to invite people with thanks, special thanksgiving to come as we pray. Time of thanksgiving. You have a reason as to why you are here. So let's come and give thanks to the Lord. Amen. The choir will give us a song as we come to give thanks to the Lord. The rest may be seated. from you. Lord, out of what you have given to us, we have given to you as a token of our love. Receive it, O King of glory. Sanctify it with the precious blood of the Lamb. And Lord, we pray that it will be put to good use. And we pray, King of glory, that you continually bless your people. Heavenly King, we also want to thank you for those that have come to give thanks to you. These, your children, your, your daughters and sons, have come to say thank you. You are the all-knowing God, and you know why they are thanking you. Heavenly Father, I pray that you receive this thanksgiving, O oh Lord. They are also, Lord, showing gratitude for the many things you have done for them. Perhaps, Lord, some of them are, are thanking you for healing them. Perhaps, Lord, some of them are thanking you for the promotion. Perhaps some of them, Lord God, are thanking you for the gift of life that they still have. Perhaps, Lord, some of them are thanking you for, for success in their exams. Perhaps some of them are thanking you, Lord God, for success in their business. Lord, you know it all. Lord, we give thanks to you that, Lord, people can come to thank you. Receive their thanksgiving. And, Lord, I pray that you continue to watch over them day by day and night by night. Continue, Lord God, to protect them. 
against attacks of the enemy. Your word in Isaiah 54, 17 says, that no weapon fashioned against us shall prosper, and that you, O Lord, will silence every tongue that chooses us falsely. May that scripture be fulfilled in their lives, O Lord God. And may you always give them money to give thanks to you, Lord, when they come in your sanctuary. We give you thanks. We give you praise. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Continue. We shall continue in prayer as we conclude the service. Let us continue in prayer. You are so kind and gracious to us, Abba Father. Thank you for loving us all. Indeed, you know each one of us by name. For that, we are grateful. We are so privileged to have you as our Father, yet our God, creator and sustainer of all things. Lord, even as we go out, we continue to pray that we shall remain in your presence. Lord, may you hem, the, hem us in on all sides, and may you give us more grace upon grace to shine for you and to represent you as you send us out into the world. Now, my dear friends, brothers and sisters, may the Lord in his mercy turn his face towards us all. May the peace of God which transcends human understanding keep our hearts and minds in him alone. May the blessings of God rest upon us all. To you, my brothers and sisters standing, to you, my brothers and sisters, all of you, my friends, seated and everywhere. The blessings of God go before you and after you. The blessings of God surround you, set you apart. The blessings of God rest upon everyone and anything that concern you. This blessing make you a blessing in the name of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. To Kute Tenderizo. As we plan to go out, this is an announcement from Bukedi Diocese. The Kampala Fellowship is being launched today at St. John's Church, Makere. And the Right Reverend Samuel Bogere, Egesa, Bishop of Bukedi Diocese, will be present. You are all invited, all of you from the Bukedi Diocese, you're invited to be a part of the Kampala Fellowship. It will be at exactly 2 p.m. Please tell a friend to tell a friend about this Bukhead Fellowship, Kampala Chapter. Praise the Lord. Once again, please turn to your neighbor and thank them for coming to be in the presence of the Lord and for sitting next to you. Her, my auntie wants to say a word, but I, you already said we shall talk. <laughs> well, and now the service has ended, so we are going
She's a PK. So PKs can preach hallelujah. Now we are done with our service. Go into the world to love and to serve the Lord. Exceedingly abundantly above all you could ask or think according to the power. Hallelujah. Praise 